Hello everybody, my name is Kai Wehner and I work as technology evangelist for Confluent. Today I want to introduce to you KSQL, the open source streaming SQL engine for Apache Kafka. This is just a short recording and I will mostly focus on a live demo to introduce to you KSQL with a few examples. As I said, it's the streaming SQL engine for Apache Kafka. That means you can easily write and process different messages on Kafka without writing source code like in Java. You just write SQL code and deploy it for continuous processing. The basic concept of KSQL uh, is based on Kafka streams. So if you know Apache Kafka, the open source project well, it consists not just of the messaging layer and of the distributed storage, but it also includes Kafka Connect for integration and Kafka streams for stream processing. KSQL is a wrapper around Kafka streams, so you can leverage all the power of Kafka streams, like the high volume throughput, the scalability, the failover of Kafka, and the streams API like aggregation, filtering, and all the other things you can do with stream processing functions. And on top of that, you can leverage KSQL so that you just have to write KSQL, which means SQL similar code. Just that easy. And that can be deployed for real time processing and continuous processing of high volume data. So it's really not mean just for interactive analysis. You can also do that with it and, for example, debug some Kafka topics. But also it's really meant for continuous deployment to process any new input data, either stateless, for example, for streaming ETL, or also stateful for powerful aggregations, for example, for anomaly detection. Why did Confluent build KSQL and open source it? Well, Kafka Streams is a great technology on top of Kafka. You can use it um, if you're a core developer, more or less. It's a Java API, so you use it on the Java platform. You can do very powerful things with it, but therefore, of course, it also has some complexity in the API. For that, we also built KSQL to create a new expanded realm for doing stream processing. With KSQL, you can do very similar things like with Kafka Streams, but much, much easier because you don't have to write the source code. So it's really a great innovative idea for people who don't like Java or Java platform code or who are not really developers at all but uh, know how to use some SQL stuff. You also have a REST interface so you can even use SQL from another language like Python or .NET or something like this. There are of course some trade-offs. So um, with the native consumer and producer API, for example for Java or also for other uh, languages, for example, we have Confluent APIs also for Python, Go, or C, C++. Um, this is very low level, therefore, of course, powerful, but you have to build more by yourself. The Kafka Streams API um, is a wrapper around producers and consumers with some more smart logic for doing stream processing and local state management and all these things you need for aggregations and powerful streams. And then the most simple uh, scenario is KSQL, where you really, as you see here, just write SQL-like code and deploy it for continuous processing. There's always a trade-off and you have to choose the right one for your problem. KSQL is equally viable for small and very large use cases. That means you can develop on your laptop, but then also on small server clusters and then even really extreme large scale in the cloud or so. So like Kafka, Kafka Stream scales absolutely well and so you can use it in any kind of use case and scenario. And very important, KSQL is ready for production already, including 24-7 support. So it's really meant to be used in mission-critical deployments. With that introduction, let's now really focus on the live demo. Um, you typically start the KSQL server, which is a node or two nodes or ten nodes, depending on how you want to scale. And then you use um, the KSQL client where you um, do the interactive analysis and also then the continuous processing of data. In this example, we will use clickstream data to analyze users and page views and their ratings. This is typically how you develop and that's what I will do in a live demo in a minute. You create different streams and tables and select queries. Of course, there is also a nice web UI. Um, this is part of Confluent Control Center. Here you can do um, the development and analysis in the UI in the web browser. Um, it's simply uh, the same functionality in a different uh, u u view. And here you have great things, for example, um, like auto-completion, as you can see on the right. And this here is just the beginning, so this will get much more powerful in the next months and years. With that, let's now focus really on the live demo. 
how to use ksql, what it is, how to get started, and all these kind of things. So for the rest of the presentation, more or less, I go to my command line interface in the terminal. First, we need to start Kafka, so I really start from zero here. For that, I use the um, Confluent command line interface, which you can use in development on your laptop to start things up quickly. So, and you also have a lot of other commands as you see here. In our case, we are just starting some components of Kafka. So here I say Confluent start schema registry. And this starts the schema registry and all of its dependencies, like the Zookeeper and the Apache Kafka broker. We could actually also start ksql here in this command, but I wanted to show you the, the specific explicit command of starting it, like you would do it in production scenarios also. So, um, but if you want to do local development, you can even start ksql within this in just one command. So here now we have started everything we need. We need the Zookeeper, the Apache Kafka, and the schema registry. These are the three components we need to use in addition to ksql. So with that, let's now go to the next one. Here we see um, this is the server which we start. Here you see um, this is the um, command line script for starting the server. And we also give it a server properties. This includes things like the Kafka brokers. So in my case, they run locally, but of course, they could also run somewhere else. Now, in addition um, to starting Kafka and ksql, we also want to start some test files. Um, we generate some generated data because streaming is always continuous processing on events. In this case we have users, they are in JSON format in this case. So we by the intention now use different data sets to show you how to use case SQL of them. And here you see how it continuously generates user data for clickstream. The same is done um, what we do for page views um, for each user. And in this case these are delimited, right? So we use different um, data formats. And the third one is the ratings. The ratings is Afro format. So this is again another one and we will see its advantages later in this demo. So now we're generating all the data and with this we can now start our command line interface for ksql. As I said, you could also use the UI if you want. Here now we are in the command line interface which connected to the ksql server. In my case I have only one server, but of course you could also have a huge cluster of many ones. Let's take a look at what we can see here. For example, we can also use it for analysis and debugging. Here we see all the Kafka topics we want to use. Here we see some internal topics, but also then the page views, ratings and users. So here you see it's just all hello world with only one partition or so for playing around with it. Um, so you see the, the usage is like a normal command line interface. And now um, we can, for example, also see the data, like we can do print, page views, and this is one of the topics which we created before from beginning. And now here you see the stream of data which is continuously processing data. And I also need to stop that with Control C. After seeing some data, let's create a first stream out of that. So right now the page views is just in a topic and we now need to create a stream out of that. That's page views original for example. And we have to give it some structure like the view time big end user id var jar page id var jar this is the structure now of this topic which we use for the stream and we use it with the kafka topic page views page views so this is how it looks like and with that we also need to add a value format and in this case, you see it is delimited. So this is the um, first stream we create. Here we see our stream was created. We can show all the streams. We just have one right now and in delimited format. Now we can also describe it, for example, to the page views or original. So it's a type also, that's okay. Original. And you also have to use a semicolon. And here you see now the structure. It also uses the row time and the row key, which is um, it receives from the Kafka topic. With that, um, we can now go to the next step. We can now do a query. Select page ID, user ID from page views, original, original, limit 10, let's say. 
here you see now how it continuously selects the queries, but in this case it stops with 10, because otherwise it would be real-time processing continuously until you stop it, because typically you do not want to use analysis, but we have to deploy it for continuous stream processing, like ETL and so on, where you do really continuous processing of every new incoming event. So um, this is um, a stream for the um, page views original. Now let's also take a look at the users. Um, here we can also set from beginning and see this um, JSON data. Right? So um, with this we create now a table, which is another construct in Kafka streams and KSQL. So here, original, we now um, define a table. The difference between a table and a stream is that the table um, only stores the most updated way. It's similar to a relational database. So we have here register time, big end, gender, varchar, region ID, varchar, user ID, varchar, and we use a topic, Kafka topic, equals users. This is the Kafka topic we use for this stream, or for this table that I had, and we use a value format of JSON this time instead of the unlimited. And the key is important here, the key is user ID. Okay, now we create a table, now we can also show the tables. And we can of course also describe users original. Here we see the structure of this table. We can here now as next step also um, select data from the table, select star from users original and now it continuously queries this. So it is also, it also have no limitation here, so it continuously queries forever in the end, right? Because typically we do not want to just select the data but also for example process it with a filter, transform or aggregation. But here now I do command C for stopping this. After that um, we can now as next step show how to combine these. So for example I can create another table female users as select star from users original where gender equals female. So here you see now a combination of a stream and a table. Let's see how it works. This looks good. And now um, we can also list topics with this. You can see now um, we also have a new topic here. In this case, um, because this is a new table, which we select as from existing ones, right? So now we create a new topic with new data. This is the same what you use for aggregations or streaming ETL when you want to create new data out of that. And with that now, we can, for example, do select uh, star from female users limit three, for example. To select the next three events which are coming here. And after that, it should stop it. Okay, so after this, you have seen how to combine different streams and tables. And the important thing here is, as I said, so if you create a new table as select from existing ones, then it creates also a new topic because you create new data, right? And the difference again between tables and streams is that a stream stores and processes every event, while the table only the most recent one. So for example, if you have a table customer, like in a relational database, if you query it or use it in a join with another stream, then you only get the most updated version. Okay, with that now, um, let's list the topics again, or we see them here. You know, we also have the ratings. This is Afro, and the pretty cool thing about Afro is that we can use that in an easier way. So let's go to ratings again, print ratings. So here you see the ratings. Um, this is Afro format, and under the hood it's JSON data. And the great thing now is if you want to create a stream from Afro data, we can create say create stream and ratings. So this time again it's using the existing ratings topic right with Afro. And so here we say this time with Kafka topic equals ratings. Use the existing Kafka topic 
And so now we say value format equals afro. Afro. With that one, the difference is here. Uh, let me see, create stream ratings with Kafka topic equals ratings. Value format, I here's the type one. So. Okay, the streams. Now we see two streams, and the key is that the rating streams is now Afro. And so we didn't have to put in here the structure. That's the great thing because in Afro, it knows the structure already. So I can create new streams when I use Afro as data format without defining the stream again here, the structure. And that makes it much, much easier for, for use. And then we can really, on top of that, um, to select queries. Let's first describe um, extended the ratings. Instead of using just describe um, a, a stream or table, we can also use extended to get more information. And here now we see um, the key format is string and the value format is afro in this case. And the structure, as you see here, it's known, even though we didn't add it. So that's a great thing. And therefore we can now still do queries on top of that, like select star from ratings, where stars smaller or equal three and run that. So here you see the stars, which is the integer here. You can use that in the query. That's pretty easy and no problem here. Because we use Afro, we don't have to define the structure again in the streams table or stream. So that makes it pretty easy to process and use all the things. So that's more or less the short demo I wanted to show you. Um, KSQL like Kafka Streams is much more powerful. You can do things like aggregations, for anomaly detection and all these things. Like for example, you can use customer sessions or sliding windows. So it's much more flexible. After we're done with the client interface here, we can also exit it. And the same what we did in a command line interface, you can do via REST and for example, from another language like Python or um, whatever language you want to use. So here now, um, let's stop the data generators and um, also stop the KSQL server. And finally, we go back to the Confluent CLI, where we still have all the stuff here running. So let's say Confluent Destroy. This does not just stop the nodes, but also delete all of the temporary data, so that we can next time start from the beginning without any history or so. So that's pretty cool also. And with this, Confluent Status again, we are done. This was the demo. Let's just go back quickly to the um, slides. So one more thing, so um, I showed very simple stuff, but here you can see you can do much more powerful things with KSQL. In this case, I have built a scenario where I leverage deep learning with autoencoders under the hood for IoT sensor analytics. And you see here in the end, um, it's a typical Kafka pipeline and streaming platform where you have, in this case, health check sensors, you send them to Kafka. And here with KSQL, you analyze the incoming data in real time, um, but and then you filter it. And via Kafka Connect, you send all the data to an Elasticsearch cluster for analysis, but also the critical filters to an emergency system, for example, if a person probably will get a heart attack soon. And in this case, I use the same create stream syntax and created a stream anomaly detection. But in this case, I used a user-defined function called anomaly. And this under the hood is Java code. And in my case, it leverages our TensorFlow autoencoder to do predictions about if people will probably get a heart attack or have other anomalies so that we can send an alert to a doctor. Um, this I also have written a blog post and I have the GitHub project here where you can take a look. Um, right now, um, user-defined functions is not that easy to use out of the box, um, but this will come in one of the next releases in 2018. And then you can easily build user-defined functions with also Java script, Python, or Go. And today you'd have to write Java code in a Java class under the hood. With that, that's it. Now I would like to ask you to get started with that. The same demo what I showed you and much more powerful stuff is available on our GitHub page where we can really get started in minutes for the first demo like I did and then also for a much more powerful with clickstream data for um, Kafka Connect, Elasticsearch and Grafana. You can really set that up in 30 minutes or so. So um, we also have a Slack channel in the community where you can discuss that and of course also in our open source project. So remember, KSQL is the streaming SQL engine for Apache Kafka, and it's a much easier way to do stream processing than all the other stuff, and it leverages all the features of Apache Kafka under the hood. My name is Kai Wehner, and I'm technology evangelist at Confluent. Let me know what you think about KSQL, and please try it out and send us your feedback. Thank you for watching.